Behind every decision and action we make lies willpower. My father, Dr. Lester Sumrall, referred to it as the potent power of the universe. We find ourselves using this power whenever we attempt a physically demanding chore, when we quit an addiction or even the daily tasks of life. Today's teaching will not only explore the will of man, but also of God and His Word impacting our will. I'm Pete Summerall. Watch and I know you'll be enriched spiritually by this teaching. Welcome to the Lester Summerall Teaching Series. Join Dr. Summerall as he shares lessons that are the result of over 50 years of ministering around the world. Today's teaching will focus on the will, the potent force of the universe. May I welcome you to a very exciting uh, teaching series. Uh, to teach is exciting. The Bible says, my people are destroyed, you know, because of a lack of knowledge. And, and God, God holds us responsible for conveying knowledge. Moses was responsible in his generation. Joshua was responsible in his gener generation. Elijah was responsible in his generation. Jesus was responsible in his generation. You and I are responsible in our generation. Your children are not supposed to grow up ignorant. And many times schools do not teach them the essentials of knowledge. They only teach them byproducts that many times is not usable in our regular lives. We're teaching during this special series. It's called the will. Uh, we, of course, would like to call it the human will, but that's not really the subject. It is willpower in every dimension, in every entity. Willpower, the potent force of the universe. Now, this is part two of what is will. And then we will be dealing with the will of God the Father. And I'm very excited to get into that. That's your next lesson. Then the will of the Lord Jesus Christ. He, he demonstrated tremendous will. The will of the Holy Spirit, of the Holy Ghost. The will of humankind. That might be the greatest <laughs> of the lessons. Uh, so don't miss it for sure. The will of angels. Angels have wills. The Bible tells all about it. And the will of demons. In our, in our last lesson, we revealed to you that in, in the Bible that there is a, an amazing amount written about wills. That if you look in your strong concordance, most people have a strong concordance, you will discover 12 pages that, that cover the word will, willfully, and willingly. And, and, and counting down the page in, in my concordance, I, I saw that there were 360 references per page. This makes 4,320 references on will. Now, if God said so much about it, why don't we <laughs> seek to understand what He's talking about? You can live clear outside of the realm of the knowledge of God by living a mundane life or humanistic life on the face of this earth without proper relationships with God. God cannot bless ignorance because God is not ignorant. Therefore, we must learn. In this first lesson on what is will, we have been determining several factors. For example, the will can be motivated by, by sources of influence such as wish. To will is to wish. And, and we showed you there how the human reaches out to receive something. He wishes for it. Or he wishes, or he <laughs> reaches out to change something. He wishes to change this house into another house. You know, he, he wishes to change something. So by, by wishing for a difference and for a change, he is showing you the forces of the will to do something and that his courage to do it, many times his attitude in order to perform it. So to will is to wish. And then we find that to will is to choose. Uh, that, that if you wish to be a farmer, you, you have a will for that. If you fish, wish, if you uh, choose to be uh, an electrician, 
then you, you know, you, you choose to do that. If you say, I will become a doctor, you will to become a doctor. That is a matter of choice. That is your will power functioning. And then if you, if you will to be an attorney, then, then you set all your mind and your total being into that one groove that I am going to be a successful attorney. You go to school for it, and then you, and then you begin to ply your trade. You will to do that. And the same is true as, as a minister of the gospel. Only the minister of the gospel, it is different in that God has to make the choice first. In, in John 15 and 16, he says, You have not chosen me, I have chosen you, and ordained you that you should go and bring forth fruit, you see. And, and so uh, Paul often said uh, that I was born into the kingdom of God, and I was commanded to be an apostle. And so uh, he, he found that his born-again thing uh, of uh, becoming a disciple of Christ and his will, you know, was chosen of God. God chose him. That was God's will coming to your will. Now, we're going to teach you in some further lessons that uh, you, you have a battle of wills, a, a cosmic battle of wills, uh, that God's will and the Satan's will are two different wills. And Satan's will constantly combats God's will, you see, and that we are in a neutral position here that we can choose either side. We can say, I will to be like God or I will to be like Satan. And nobody can, can cause you not to do that. Uh, we, we, we have a an area uh, where people say, Brother Summerall, I pray for my husband to be saved. Well, you can pray if you want to, but now if he wants to go to hell, that's his privilege. You know, you can't make him go to heaven. You can say God uh, caused things to happen that will make his will, you know, make a decision to come to God. We just want you to know that will is related to choice. And then will is related to willingness. Will is related to willingness that it gives assent to, or it, it, it says, I perform in this way, or I give over into this thing. So, will is strongly related to willingness. Will you marry me? Will you go with me to someplace? Will you have dinner with me? You see, we, we, we use the word will without realizing its significance and its dominant force in our lives, and if we turn it negative, it can destroy us forever. And so, we have to in, in some way cause our will to be related to God very strong. It was Adam's will that got him out of the garden. <laughs> you better believe it. It was Satan's will that got him out of heaven. And it may be your will that gets you out of the place where God doesn't want you to go at all. God wants you to go to heaven. God wants you to be happy. You see, I'm talking about, I'm talking about desire. That's the will of God. We're going to teach you more and more about it. So stay with us real close because we want you to understand this third dimension of your solical parts. Your solical parts are made up of mind, emotions, and will. We're studying precisely the will, and not only of yourself, but of God, angels, and so forth. All right. So will means to consent, uh, to say, yes, I agree. And, and, and uh, I accept the condition, I accept the proposition, and I will to do that. Or you can add the other word, unwilling. God says, will you do it? You say, I am unwilling to do this. And you don't have to do it because will is sovereign. God gave you the will. You don't have to obey anybody. Uh, you can be a rebel, and of course you can go to hell. But if, if you have to submit your will to go to heaven, you must submit the human will to go to heaven. When Christ said, not my will, but thy will be done, that was his, that was his key to heaven. That was his key to greatness when he submitted his will. The biggest thing that any human has to submit is his will. And I must tell you that most wills are in rebellion against God. And what is the will of God concerning you? That's what you better find out. All right, we're teaching you about will. Now, this means that to will means that you can like or dislike. I, I, I will to like asparagus. I refuse to like potatoes. So your will, <laughs> right at the table. Now, sometimes you have to break the will of children down. They says, I, I, I refuse to eat this, and it's delicious. They haven't tried it yet. And, and so the will of the parent has to come in stronger against that little will and say, I'll have to teach this will to, to subordinate itself to me and also to God, or it will be a will of rebellion like the devil has, you know, in rebellion against the Most High and rebellion against everything the Most High does you know, total, total rebellion. And so, uh, to will is to, is to like, or it is, is to dislike. 
uh, this, the will, has power uh, to approve or disapprove. And you have to realize that. You have to know that. Or you won't ever be able to know what your will is doing and, and where, who it belongs to. <laughs> your will is like a golden box. Don't let anybody else in there. It's treasure. And don't let anybody else have it in Jesus' name. All right. What is will? A will is, is to long for. Long for. Will has power to reach out for the new and for the better. You, sometimes you long for a new house. You long for a new job. That's your willpower functioning within you. Longing, you know, reaching out to that which you don't have. Reaching up to that which you wish to achieve. To be a, a, a greater attorney, a, a greater doctor, or a greater minister, you know, or, 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 or whatever. And so to will is to long for. Now, now we've already here made one, two, three, four, five, uh, six, six of, of these amazing uh, motivational forces related to will. Let's go on with some more because we, we must get this thing clear through to all of us. To will is volition. To will is volition. That means unrestricted action. Now, now if you're in Russia, uh, your, your will is in a bad shape because uh, the will of the government is above your will. And, and so, uh, you, you don't have free will in Russia. It is not known there. You, you don't have freedom to speak. You don't have uh, freedom to worship. You don't, you don't have freedom to even go and buy things. You don't even have freedom of jobs. You work where the government tells you to work. Uh, you, you, don't, you can't change houses. You can't say, I'm going to go buy me another house or rent another house. Uh, you see, because will is restricted under communism because communism, as I'm going to teach you a little later, is under the devil, you see. It's under the devil, and the devil does not want the human to have the functioning of the willpower. And so we, we discover here that to will is a power of volition, unrestricted action, to, that, that your will be free to act, you know, only God will teach you. But you don't, you don't have to obey God either, you know. Uh, and, and in communist countries, of course, they are against the government, and fighting back all the time, which means that their will is in a state of rebellion. You see, they're unhappy because their will has been subdued, and so they fight back with rebellion in, in their will powers. Now let's go a little further. To will is the power to express tendencies and also to express beliefs. It is the will that has authority to reveal, you know, things to come, unseen things, and things that we're reaching out for. So to will is a power to express the tendencies of what we are and what we believe. That puts your will into action every day. I believe this way. <laughs> it's your willpower uh, addressing itself through you, you see. I, I have a tendency toward this. It's your willpower that's functioning uh, within you, helping you to, to reach up to achieve, to achieve your tendencies and your beliefs. And it'll make it. It will, it, it will do the amazing and the remarkable. Possibly we should say that to will is also to hope. The will has power just to invade the future uh, with a new and a fresh experience it desires. Hope is strong force. It is a mighty strong force to determine our, our destiny. And so to will is to hope. Hope. Just say, I hope that your will coming into and you know, it'll, it'll change things. When that hope moves up within you with the powers of your will, then things begin to change around you. You just don't accept the status quo. You just don't accept things as they are. Your will is the determining factor to say, I'm hoping for a better day. I'm hoping for a better situation. And will will bring energy into action that causes the change uh, to take place. So what is will? A uh, will is related to desire. God the desire is very pleasing to God, of course. Uh, the power of will is related to desire. What do we desire uh, within us? Uh, uh, a new automobile or, or, you know, something that we desire. And then uh, that is related to your willpower. It goes into, into strength and into operation and into know-how, saying, I must bring to pass the desire that the will has said that we must have. And so the whole life begins to change by the force of willpower. 
Now, what is, <laughs> uh, what is within a man when he doesn't obey God in his will? Then we come to a perverted will. A perverted will uh, demonstrates itself in rebellion. When you see a person in rebellion, that means that their will has become perverted. And, and they're using their strength and their talents and, and, and whatnot in rebellion. Now, we know this because the devil lost his position in heaven by saying, I will. I went into controversy with God, and in so doing, and in so doing, uh, through his will, he lost all of heaven. He lost all of heaven through his will. And, and we're going to show you that. We're going to give a whole lesson on that a little later in the series that we certainly want you to, you know, to understand and to come into. So now the core of the human will resides, number one, in the human soul. It is part of your trinity of your solical parts. So the will is closely related to mind and emotions as it is a, it, it is a, a fabric of the same. The three are one within you. Mind, emotions, and will. These three are, are one. They're closely related to your mind and your emotions, which are all a solical energies that make you what you are, cause you to go where you go, cause you to be just exactly what you are right now. They, they came to us uh, through God and through Adam. <laughs> uh, when Adam when Adam fell in sin, uh, he did not do the will of God. It was God's will that he lived in that garden forever. Uh, when we get into the will of humankind, it's really going to be one of the most exciting lessons you have ever heard. I, I can just assure you that. So, uh, God created man and gave him a will, and that will came down to us through, through Adam. So, the, 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 the will relates to the mind and that it assists the mind. The mind makes decisions that the will determines. The will says, decide this way. The mind says, yeah. In fact, the mind has to be obedient to the will. The will is stronger than the mind. So the will can say to the mind, see it this way, do it this way, and the mind obeys. The human mind evaluates for the will. It helps the will. Uh, the human mind can say, now, if, if, you, if, you know, if you do this, you'll get into trouble or so, so But that can't stop it. The will can override what the mind has to say about it. Then you come to the emotions. And the emotions can comfort the will and all of its desires. And, and the emotions can even break up and start weeping and say, oh, I wouldn't do this if I were you. A man wants a divorce from his wife. He wills to get a divorce. His mind says, you won't have anybody to cook for you. And your emotion can say, oh, it's going to be bad. The will can still go ahead and do it, you see. That means it overrules emotions and it overrules the, 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 the mental faculties that he has. Almost every divorce in, in the world uh, really is, is, is stupid, you know, mentally. It, it is stupid. And, and emotionally, it's a breakup, you know. But the stubbornness of the will causes it to come about. I will do it. It don't matter what happens. I will, you see. So the will must be subject, as we're going to teach you, uh, to the body of Christ. It must be subject to the born-again experience. It must be subject to spiritual reality in order for it to be the great situation in your mind, in your heart, in your life, and in your destiny. So the, the human emotions can give man a good feeling about the decisions that it has made, and the human will has made those decisions. That means the three are functioning as one at that point at that state. The realm of the human will. Now, I don't believe that uh, maybe any human would be capable of giving a finality uh, to the absolute realm of the human will. The will of man uh, possesses far-reaching strengths and powers and, uh, and authorities and so forth. The will, the force of the will can be, of course, for good, or it can be for bad, you know, either way. It can be used negatively. It can be used positively. It can be usually used in a godly way. It can be used in an ungodly, God, ungodly way. But as far as the outreaches of it, maybe, maybe the will, when we study the will of God the Father, we will look into that vastness of it. But maybe the human will has not been developed, <laughs> that it could will to do things that have not been done on the face of this earth yet. 
that the, the, through the breaking down of the will and the, and the hurt of the will that we haven't achieved, that we could achieve on the face of this earth. So maybe the will needs healing. Maybe the will needs strengthening, you see. And, and then we can see the outreaches, the perimeters, the, the far reaches that we could go with the human will. I, I am sure that man is limited. Catch the word. Man is limited by his will. That if when he wills to do a thing, brother, you take a nation that wants to be free, I tell you, if they don't have guns, they use butcher knives. And, and, and they go out and, and they kill the intruders and they set themselves free. It is a will to be free. And so what we must stir up within you at this time is a will to be godlike and a will to bring salvation to the ends of the earth and a will to have great churches and a will to have prosperity. There are many people not prosperous because they don't have a will to be. They don't have a will to be. And so we must work and function in this area of will in order that we can bring about the successes that you want and desire in your own heart and your own life. So the realm of the will, maybe we haven't reached it yet. <laughs> oh, maybe, there, maybe there's a million miles of territory uh, unexplored out there in the area of will. But these are my first lessons to give you in this area. I've never heard a sermon on it in my life by anybody. And, and so therefore, we're treading on ground that we're seeking a new knowledge and further knowledge in. What does, follow me now, what does the word at will, at will means? At will means an intelligent creature moves and thinks in an uninhibited manner as he desires or as he wishes or as he feels. He does it at will, at will. This is a category of greatness and of potential life and strength and vigor that we can hardly imagine. Did you know that I understand that maybe over 90% of the world population today cannot do anything at will? They don't, they don't have the freedom to do things at will. And that causes so much frustration because man is born of free will. God created him a free will moral agent, that he is in complete charge of his willfulness, either to follow God or not follow God, and to live peacefully or not live peacefully, that God has permitted him to have this tremendous force of will, you know, to move out and to be what the Lord you know, has designed and wants him to be. And so when we talk about being at will, it means that an intelligent creature moves and thinks in, in an uninhibited way, that he has, you know, the rights to do it, and the power to do it, and so he does it. What is free will? A free will is an expression of liberty where an intelligent being can move or speak at his or her discretion. That means free will. Free will makes decisions voluntarily, without government, or without peer pressure upon it, free will. Thank God for free will. A will is a document of force. When a man makes out a will or a woman makes out a will, he or she is recording their desire regarding property or other possessions to be distributed at their demise. And so they make out a will that this is my last will and testament. You see, there's a lot more to will than, than anybody that I've ever met has uh, come up with, and we are determined to bless you with it and to help you with it until we come into some great strength with it. What does it mean for something to be against the will? All right, it means that you know the wishes of God, and when you don't do them, uh, then you are against the will of God. You know the commandments of God, you understand the law of God, yet you volitionally go the opposite direction, or you do the opposite thing. And at that point, you are out of the will of God, against the will of God. God's will uh, does not override your human will, or it ceases to be will. At that point, when God overrides you, then it ceases to be will. You're no longer the person you were created to be. Now, God has refused to do that, and God will not do it. God is leaving you with free will to do whatever that you wish to do. Now, what motivates the will? I give you a few of them. Love motivates will. God is love. He motivates will. Intelligence motivates will. Build a factory. 
build an airplane, build a bomb. <laughs> Intelligence motivates well. Sensation motivates well. Feeling or even hate or, or jealousy. But uh, sensation motivates will. Now, in your daily life, you will find will at every point of your existence, you know, in every decision that you make. You will ask a friend, will you do this for me? Will. You're breaking down his will inside of him. We're asking him to put into action a solical force created by God. Will you do it? In business, you ask a client, will you buy this? It could be against reason or it could be against emotion, and yet his will determines whether he buys it or not. <laughs> he may not be using his mind nor his emotions with it, just his willpower. A young man asks a young lady, uh, will, you, will you kiss me? Uh, what is he requesting? He is requesting a function of the will, and she has to say yes or no to what he wishes, asking that her will to be equal with his will. Will they will to do it together? The minister says to the bride and the groom, will you receive each other as husband and wife? And will you covenant together that you will live together the total amount of all of your days upon the face of this earth? Now this means that will is commitment. That will is commitment. It is a lifelong resolve. By him, by, uh, by his will, the man can can persist to keep his promise and say, yes, I will do this. Positively, man has, has never yet fathomed the depth of the intelligent will of a human person. It is a privilege for Lacey Broadcasting to present these life-changing teachings by Dr. Summerall. If you found today's message valuable to your life, we encourage you to visit our website and obtain any of the inspiring audio or video recordings Dr. Summerall made over his lifetime. Your purchase will ensure the continued support of Lacey Broadcasting for many more years of teachings by my father. I'm Pete Summerall, and thanks for watching.